I've been pulling for more nigga, more nigga. I'm just trying to get up, nigga, up, nigga. Tell me why you wanna talk, nigga, talk, nigga. Are you trying to make me more, nigga, more, nigga? I've been plotting for more, nigga, more, nigga. I'm just trying to get up. Dang, <laughs> members, how the? It's your name, Major Boy, and I'm gonna get another goddamn video, man. Hello. King members, man. I look, man, look, man, look, man. But I waste some time. So this video is titled Teen Sisters Raped as Horrors from Ukrainian Town Cut Off for 35 Days Emerge. So there was a Ukrainian town that was cut off for 35 fucking days. Like how were they cut off though? Like I wanna see this video and understand what how how that was possible. Like how were they cut off? Is it like there was no uh cell or they couldn't leave? Like, how did that happen? And you can see how happy they are to see finally, like, people coming to save them. This is terrible, fam. This is terrible. Like, I, until the last video, I didn't realize how bad, like, things were in Ukraine right now. Like, I really did not understand. And I've spoken to a couple of Russian fans that, like, have told me, like, oh, they live on a certain side of Russia that the war does not affect them and stuff like that. Let's check it out, man. Let's not get too emotional. For Ivankiv, finally, this was a day of salvation. Ivankiv? Is that the name of the town? Ukrainian army engineers have built a pontoon bridge, reconnecting this small town with the outside world. Oh, so they couldn't leave a relief. Of oh, there was a river that stopped them. The of Russian occupation was obvious. But it's only when you hear what they've gone through that you can understand. Marina is the deputy mayor here and has heard grim accounts of how Russian soldiers treated women in the area. The town's physical damage is limited to a few streets, but it's what you can't see that's, that's more sad. devastating. <laughs> Elena Skoropad is telling me about trying to save her son Artem. She scooped him into her arms after he was hit by shrapnel, describing the injuries in graphic detail. Artem was just 12 years old, a keen basketball player his mother and stepfather, Sasha, had tried to flee, but they say a cluster munition exploded, peppering them with shrapnel. So he died? The hospital is full of those injured from the shooting, shelling and mines. But they're thankful there are now medical supplies. For more than a month, the doctors worked with almost nothing. We work it without any electricity, without water, without anything, without any medicine, medicaments, no connection with the outside, with the world. And a lot of victims here from, the, uh, from Russian attacks. Uh, Russians attack civilians. And I, I began some people talking about how they want to live off greed and disconnect from the world. Man, nobody can live like that, man. You got to have some sort of connection to the main world. That's sad. For 35, 35 days. I see brought tears to my eyes, man. 15 and 16 years old. Jesus. Like, it's going to be hard for people to, like, go back to their normal ways of life. They're going to be so paranoid every fucking day for the rest of their life. Like... They killed civilians. A lot of people with the gunshot wounds. It's only today that people have managed to connect their phones to a temporary hotspot here. And suddenly they're able to talk to loved ones and find out who's still alive. Their faces tell a story of grief and shock at the scale of the war that until now has been hidden from them. That's the way it is in America like right now. The scale of this war is really like not being shown to the, like the citizens out here. 
by the Russian army. Only now is the truth beginning to emerge about the horrors that have taken place. 20 miles to the south, the town of Borodyanka has been hollowed out by Russian missiles and artillery. Below the charred cliff faces of what were once apartment blocks, a police team has the grim task of recovering the remains of the inhabitants. In an ordinary residential street nearby, the detritus of the ill-disciplined army, which apparently forced its way into homes like this, marking the walls with their insignia. The front garden wow. is littered with their ration packs and empty drink bottles. So they were drinking. Why the hell are these people hostage? It is in the back garden that the true depravity of their occupation becomes clear. It seems this man has not only been humiliated, but also horribly tortured. His head is bound in plastic. Visually, we see that people are connected, the hands are connected to the back, and there was some kind of torture относно вище вказаної особи. В зв'язку з тим, що голова замотана, то ж ми навіть візуально не можемо сказати причину смерті. Або це нанесення тілесних ушкоджень, які несенісним життям, а людина просто не витримала кашування. Або він застрелений. The killing and destruction here appears to be wanton, designed to terrorize a population into submission. The bullet through the head of the statue of the Ukrainian hero and poet Taras Shevchenko is a symbol for the contempt with which the Russian soldiers held this country. I don't know what to say, man. I really don't know what to say. So tell me more videos like this to check out, man. I, I need to try to spread the word. Like, I'm going to share these videos on my Instagram and stuff. Like, because people are not realizing the skill of this war. I don't, I'm telling you, people don't realize how big this shit is. I didn't, I didn't know it was this bad. I thought it was just like fights on the border, like just them fighting on the, across the border. I didn't know they were in people's homes, raping women and shit. Like, he's making me shake. Come on. You guys stay blessed, man. Stay safe out there, man. I'll see you guys in the next video. Jesus. Love you, man. I think I drink too much, eh? I think I drink too much, eh? I think I drink too much. You broke me blood so I can't cool off. Eh?